Welcome to Connect with Success with Dr. Lynette Scatis Watilla, where we help connect you with knowledge. Our mission is to lead you to a new and exciting way of understanding, responding to, and helping all those with autism. We hope to expand your thinking about how to best serve these amazing people and to support you in your daily struggles and celebrations. Welcome everyone to the latest episode of Connect with Success, a podcast built around the success approach and the person who coined it, Dr. Lynette scott Swatilla. We have a special guest with us today who's going to give another witness on how the success approach has impacted their life with their son. And we're looking forward to taking that journey with you. So, of course, we have Dr. Lynette here with us today who's going to be helping us digest the success approach in any given situation. Dr. Lynette, what concept would you be focusing on for this episode? Today's concept is hope. Tell us a little bit about what hope means to you. Well, hope is a tainted perception of mine because I've been in the luxury position of 30 years to witness it. And those 30 years has been as have been as an occupational therapist. And the vast majority of those 30 years, I've had the luxury of working with families here at ITC, um, most of whom have children with special needs, um, sensory issues, autism, other delays. And I can't help but perceive hope in a way that the families manifest it as I watch. So it's my hope, of course, my whole field is hopeful for kids and adults that have special needs or other issues, but it's not a personal hope for me until I meet a family and then I sort of am part of that. So I've been thinking just for a moment about it and to me hope is the joyfulness I experience and see in others experiencing as we together first identify and then actualize a child's potential. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and that hope unlocks so much for the families that you serve too. And I think it's going to be interesting to see um, the perspective we have today um, with our guest and, and how hope has manifested as a result of the success approach. So let's get into that now. Okay, everybody, we have with us today Darla Signs. And uh, she is mom of Nathan, but has many other uh, hats that she wears or has worn in her entire life. So welcome to the show, Darla. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, Well, again, my name is Darla, and I am the mom of a um, nearly 23-year-old and um, my Nathan, who is 13. Nice. And uh, and so Nathan is is who attends here at Ingersoll Treatment Center. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what, what other hats have you worn in your life? Uh, well, I'm a f- formerly practicing uh, social worker. Mm-hmm. I was um, school-based, and I spent about 15 years in our local schools. Mm-hmm. Um, middle school, uh, well, they, back then they called it junior high, mm-hmm. um, and in a high school as well. Okay. And uh, what do you guys like to do for fun as a family? Oh, <laughs> Um, we are homebodies, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so we like kind of hanging around at the house. Um, Nathan has his his games that he likes to play, and um, in the spring and summer, we also have a pool. So nice. uh, we try to get outside in the yard as much as possible. Um, we also have a pond. Mm. Um, our neighbors have ducks and so they come over and visit every time they see us out they're you know, <laughs> squawking and um nathan has a lot of fun with those and <laughs> to the point we're actually um considering getting some ducks of our own wow. so, yeah. <laughs> so. Of neighbor ducks and neighbors yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's great <laughs> so tell us a little bit about nathan nathan is um a seventh grader mm-hmm. um he is funny (laughs) he's smart um he's witty um and he's a deep thinker Mm -hmm. i've always called him an old soul yes um Mm. he because he thinks even though you don't think that he is he's he's thinking about everything and how it relates to him or you know what's going on and um and he's he's fun loving. He's an animal lover. He has we have a a pug mm-hmm. <laughs> who is his um, she's his best friend. Mm-hmm. I mean, she really helps him start his day and kind of 
helps me to get him out the door and um she's just a, a love of yeah. his so he's he's definitely a, an animal lover uh, animals are definitely a theme i know we recently um got a dog over the pandemic as well and um it took a little while for finn to warm up to the idea of having rosie in the house but now he's the man who gets up in the morning because he's the first <laughs> one up on the weekends i don't try and get up early if i can help it mm -hmm. but he'll let her out and decides he wants to feed her and then she wants to hang out with him on the couch so i think he's realized that if she helps to take care of if he helps to take care of her then you know he'll hang out a little more she'll yeah. hang out a little more with him they're great really great yep best assistants in the world <laughs> they yes. let us know when things are out of sorts too. yeah they do yes, and they, they don't do. lie <laughs> <laughs> so i know that nathan is a big a video game connoisseur and i know this because our yes. sons actually work together on these games right yes yes <laughs> Yes. I love that uh, new friendship. Matter of fact, they're probably <laughs> communicating right now. Right. <laughs> I purposely didn't tell Finn that we were interviewing you today because he would have said, I don't want to do swim lessons. I want to go and play with Nathan because mm -hmm. I know his mom's on home and, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> how funny. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's get into the message for this episode. So Darla, what did you first detect in ITC that made you realize it was different from other agencies available to you? Communication. Um, when I first called um, to speak with Lynette, we talked for two hours, and she was asking me lots of questions, you know, about Nathan and who he was, and, and just really, I didn't feel rushed or hurried. Um, you know, even if we talked about one question for 15 minutes, she was asking me more questions. And um, so that, that was huge for me because I felt um, for the first time in a long time, I felt listened to. Mm. Um, and um, the other thing is really feeling like um, I'm a part of the team. I'm not just Nathan's mom, but I'm I'm a part of of this team, and my input matters, and my um, my life with Nathan and our journey um, to get this point, to this point matters, and um, and the other thing is um, just kind of in thinking it's the. The recognition of the positives and not so much focus on the negative of what he's not doing or what he did wrong or, you know, what he needs to do. It's, it's all positive. When I, when I come and pick him up, you know, it's all, he did so great today. And, you know, even though, you know, maybe he had these, you know, struggles throughout the day, he still did great. And... So that, that has made a huge difference for me. I would agree. You know, anything that you've dealt with in services with Integrations Treatment Center, it really um, helps to accentuate bringing you in as part of that. Usually as a parent, when you're sitting in and anywhere else, it's, okay, well, we're going to fill you in on what we're trying to do. And it's not necessarily bringing you in along the way. You know, it's, it's not that partnership yes. that you get. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's actually being uh, a part of a team versus just saying, you're a part of the team. Absolutely. Well, I want to add to that for some of the professionals out there listening to this because, you know, there's a name for that. It's called a transdisciplinary team. And we think about that in a professional realm of the different disciplines, the OT, the special ed, the psychology, the behavioral optometrist, the dietitian, whatever it might be. But smack dab in the middle of that team, that web of support, is a child. And there's no child without a parent. And so the parent is equal partners to us. They're, they are equal partners in the process. And they actually hold that web of support the strongest because they've had the duration, they've had the history and the longevity, and they have, and the only they can have, the vision for where they want the child to land. Um, and as a child grows and they can contribute to their own interpretation of where they want to land if they're able and interested in doing that. But we, we partner with families so we can land where it's appropriate. And that is largely defined by the family with our expertise and guidance, um, helping to the child to land where we believe they can, that hope, that identifying the potential and then actualizing it. Also, um, one thing that, that struck me was the um, 
holistic approach, uh, looking at him as, you know, a person, not just his autism or, you know, anything else that's going on with him. Um, and also something that struck me was um, the focus on his eating and how um, it's Nathan struggles um, with um, having a selective uh, diet. And that focus and recognizing that how much his nutrition mm -hmm. affects his daily life and his ability to focus in, you know, in class and um, his ability to just manage his every day, um, that was huge for me. Because that's never been anything, you know, aside from going to a nutritionist or a dietitian, it's never been something that has been focused on. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I like in the success approach to GPS, um, if you think about it, because I don't know about you with roadmaps, but I was horrible with roadmaps. <laughs> even even when they tried highlighting it on the triptychs for AAA, I still wound up somewhere uh, lost. In, in I don't know how we ever did that. I know. That. So... <laughs> but they, but they offer you this GPS because you start to recognize signals of oh wait there's a turn ahead you know they're going to turn this corner and we were able to see that and maybe it was hard for us to see that at first but it gave us the tools to be able to see oh wait they they can turn in this corner here and that's going to be coming up here because we we can recognize what what's happening and the change within them and, then, and that's where I think that hope comes into play is that we're like oh wow we can see this change if we're careful if we're if we're communicating with our team. And we're, we're, pro we're following the protocols for the success approach and making sure that, that all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. Absolutely. And I think in, in Darla's analogy that just came to me, um, of, or the idea of the feeding, and your analogy actually, Rich, of the car, is you know what I think we bring to the table is knowing what's in the tank <laughs> as yeah. the car is driving. Um, right. And that's very right. literally the expertise of the rehab services mindset. We are a day treatment center that functions like a school, because we have special ed and general ed, of course, like any other school would, but we specialize in the treatment and management of the child's disability, and part of that is eating problems. Mm -hmm. So it's great that we're getting someplace with this wonderful GPS, but if the body isn't fueled properly, that destination is going to take a lot longer to get to. Mm -hmm. So can you speak to how the team collaboration has been a part of your experience or um, how you know it over the course of your child's educational career? Something that... Um strikes me about ITC is that everyone is on the same page. It's never been, you know, I have always felt um, throughout Nathan's schooling, it was kind of um, hodgepodge. Mm -hmm. You know, this person needed to talk to this person first before they could talk to this person. And, you know, and, and you're getting snippets of, of his day or his needs or... Um, you know, their perspectives. And, and so here, everybody is on, you know, kind of reading in the same book, on the same page, and um, they all speak to you the same way. You know, they're always very um, positive and welcoming, and, and I feel like, um, kind of going back to that team approach, I, I feel like I'm a part of that process, like, authentically. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and um, with the the emails and the text messages and the updates and, you know, I don't know how she does it. <laughs> but, um, well, first of all, it's not just she. That's how it <laughs> no, happens. but I, I just, I, um, you know, I just, I feel involved for the first time in the process. Mm -hmm. And, um you know, like I said, typically it's me kind of going to these meetings and finding out, and and now I don't I don't feel that way. I feel like I'm involved in making decisions and and helping him in this journey. And even so much to say is the lead, like because that's the, that's the one thing as a parent we're not often made to feel like that we're the lead for our own child. But that the fact that an ITC and integration of treatment centers method and the success approach is we are the lead. And they, you know, because I, I, many conversations we've had, it's like, well, what would you say would be something we need to immediately address with, with your son, you know, or what, what do you feel um, would best serve to help him feel successful early so that he can get into this program? Um, and it's not so much a catch-all trick, it's just focusing on accentuating the positives so that you can have this checklist of things that you want to accomplish 
And in addition to sort of the goal setting that comes from that, like what's your ideas, here's a target, there's the day-to-day updates. Like mm-hmm. Darla's really good at that, sending us an email or going on Google Chat or um, online or even text messages to say, you know what, kind of a rough night, this might be Sunday. Kind of a rough weekend, you know, we're coming off of a blah, blah, blah experience. So just wanted to give you the heads up. And boy, does that help for prepare for Monday. So we then, if Michelle, our, our education coordinator, is on the receiving end of that text, she'll put out an early morning chat to the team so that we know, hey, heads up, might be a little raw around the edges today. Let's do a little low demand before the child's even or they're driving here you know and and to that end let me just say you drive a real far away mom so talk about a team effort you are really putting your effort into your kid when you every day drive as far as you do to come here and and that's it's a luxury for those people who live closer and it's a luxury for anybody who lives in the state of Ohio frankly Um, but those of you who make a long distance it's an exceptional um, sacrifice and commitment and we appreciate that because we want your kid to thrive just as much as you do so it's nice to have that access it's a testimony to the center I mean Mm -hmm. just absolutely the fact that you're willing to go above and beyond to do that for for Nathan you know, it really is uh, to what the success approach lends itself. So, Darla, this is one of my favorite questions, by the way, to ask families because I'm always surprised myself. But um, what about your experience at ITC was most surprising to you? The most surprising thing for me, um, just in judging from my past experiences, was um, ITC's ability and the team's ability to stop and try something new or to go in a different direction mm. um, versus this isn't working so you know we're we're kind of done so or we're just going to kind of keep doing the same thing just to get them through and and that that's always been my past experiences is just to get them through we're gonna you know what he got through you know, this grade, so he can get through the next grade. And, um, but all that time he was, he was struggling. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and then as he's gotten older, it's become even more of a struggle because then you combine, you know, the, um, hormones and his, you know, the changes that he's going through personally. And, um, all of that is, is just kind of a, a snowball and has it became much harder as he got older to just get through mm-hmm. um, and I felt like um, that was going to do him an injustice mm-hmm. um, for his future but I guess and I always wanted you know the the team I guess at, at the public schools to be able to think outside of the box um, but I don't, I don't feel that that environment really allows them to do that so much. And, and here, you know, you can do that. You can look at these um, kids um, as individuals. And, um, you know, what works for them may not work for the next um, student. And what worked for the previous student may not work for my, for my child. And... Um, so that, to me, has been um, um, probably the most surprising is that, wow, these outside-of-the-box thinkers, kind of never, never giving up on him, um, too, is we're focusing, I think I've mentioned it before, focusing on what he, he isn't doing, mm-hmm. you know, and um, not focusing on what he isn't doing but focusing on, you know, what do we need to do today, you know, so that he can get there, you know, because he, he is able to get there, but what do we need to do today to enable him to be successful? And one more layer to that, Darla, um, you know, because you're deeply involved in many decisions and almost minute-to-minute care, but it's not even what we do today, it's what are we going to do this hour? What are we going to do this minute to move him from the foyer to his homeroom up in room 203? Um, and so I want to speak to something you beautifully prefaced, um, and that is that we, you call it a think out of the box, and it is, it is out of the box thinking, but it's also a mindset. And remember, we're a day treatment center, and we're grounded in the neuroscience of occupational therapy. 
because as the founder, that's my background. And so that means I'm a therapist that understands the brain-body relationship, right? That's neuroscience. And so as we look at a child through the eyes of the success approach, because we're grounded in treatment, we expect them to be fluctuating individuals who don't come to school or program at 8 a.m. and look and feel the same way at 8.05 or 8.30 or 9 o'clock. So we anticipate, we know, we honor, we actually enjoy that fluctuation of the human condition. And we're skilled to meet it where it's at, so to speak, and get it, the child, to the next level of function. That's, I think, a good way of understanding the difference between a treatment model and a traditional education setting where... You know, their goal is to introduce lesson plans and, and curriculum content and, and make no mistake about it. At ITC, we are absolutely grounded in the content standards and core curriculum and other things that we have to be to acknowledge and abide by what the state expects us to do with our kids. But it is so much more than that. Um, and the other that comes first, the human being, um, the readiness of the human being. It ties back to one of our initial podcast, Dr. Smith, where we have a lot of insight about readiness and what fuels it. Right. And if you don't address and treat that readiness and honor it, no matter what you're throwing with ABCs and one, two, threes, it's not going to stick. Well, and I was going to reference another episode on behavior, you know, and observing readiness is that first step in understanding the behavior of, of your child. And I think that that's what separates um, ITC and the success approach from other educational venues is the fact that you're looking for that particular individual's readiness and Understanding that behavior isn't necessarily a negative thing. It's just how they're feeling in the moment and then how do we get them past that mm -hmm. so that they can be successful. And that's something that many of the educational venues don't take the time out. You know, I, I don't know about you, but when, when we were in the school system, uh, we heard a lot of, well, you know, he's just being a problem today or he is just not... Um, he's not able to function with the other kids today. And it's like that, that stabs your heart, you know, and when you're, when you're thinking about your child and you know that there's that, that obstacle that they had, they can't overcome. And then at the same token, knowing that there they can, it's just a matter of, can they unlock the formula to do that? And so when we came, that's where that hope came in for us. When we came in an integrations treatment center to your point, Lynette, and being able to say, Hey, we're able to work these strategies into the learning right. so they can unlock their potential for behavior and, learn something along the way. That's right. And I want to speak to all of our counterparts, too, in public ed. You know, I think some of the way that our kids get referred to, it's all they know. It's all their language. It's right. all their repertoire, problem child or distracting or class clown. And that isn't everywhere. But some people who still have those sort of references, they, they love the child and they hope that he will improve, too. But they don't have the professional constitution or the experience or background to know what to do about that. Mm -hmm. They want to, um, which is why we have our class for professionals as well, so that those folks can learn the insights about the human condition. I always say in our particular country, we, we try to put services in place for kids, in this case, that will educate them or make them healthy or produce some skill in them without really understanding the neurology of human development. Mm -hmm. And it's nobody's mm -hmm. fault, but it's the case. Right. And so we come in as therapists that are specialists in that and the neuroscience and brain development behind that. And we can kind of cut to the chase and do it better and actually best, in my opinion, because we're cutting through all of the wonderment. We don't have to wonder why isn't he opening his Chromebook and doing his math. We know he's systemically unfed with the right kind of nutrition because of his food. Mm -hmm. And so we nail it. Right. Outside looking in, everyone thinks he's quote unquote lazy. If you choose to use a child's, an adjective to describe a child that way, mm -hmm. we don't tend to have those adjectives because that's not how we see them here. And, and you know, paid, go back to look at both episodes. So my other podcast is Tech Study Hall and mm -hmm. Lynette and I did a crossover episode about observing writing is specific to teachers. So if you're a teacher listening to this podcast, look up Tech Study Hall. I think it's the last episode of the first season. Yeah. We talked about observing readiness and we're almost ready, I think, to do a crossover episode on just behavior mm -hmm. in the classroom and how teachers can begin to rethink that process yes. of um, not necessarily deeming the problem child, but, you know, necessarily let's get to the cause of why. And I think we talk about that quite a bit in the behavior podcast yep. is looking at the why something is being triggered for that child. Yep. That's the root. Yep. So uh, what factors should a family keep in mind in your, in your purview, Darla, um, when trying to assess the true value of a private program for treatment? For me, in, in looking back on Nathan's journey, um, I, I wish I would have started young. Um, I wish when you know, he was three and four, 
um, that we could have found ITC and and Lynette and um, gotten him the the skills that he needs and laid that groundwork for him so that you know when he was 13 he didn't have to be uprooted out of his school and away from his friends mm-hmm. and you know that um, the routine and the lifestyle that he was familiar with um, so for me I, I think start thinking when they're younger mm-hmm. um, thinking about their future and where you want them to be or um, you know Nathan has always expressed an interest in um, he wants to graduate high school he wants to go to college mm-hmm. you know he wants to eventually get married and have a family and have a house and um, he would always say to me that how am I going to be able to to do all of those things, Mom, if I can't even get through seventh grade? And and so that, you know, really touched my heart mm. and and um, told me that it was time for something new and it was time for um, us to kind of change directions and, and it wasn't okay anymore to just get through the school year. Um, that we needed something more, and that's what we have found here at ITC. Mm-hmm. Now, at what age did you find the diagnosis for Nathan? He was diagnosed um, at 21 months. Okay. Um, and what was his diagnosis then? Do you remember what they, how they referenced it? Then it was it? Um, PDD-NOS, okay. um, which today I know they just diagnose with ASD um, kind of across the board, um, and so it, it kind of started right right then. He went from um, eating and um, being a typical toddler um, to just something just shut off. Mm-hmm. And he was all of a sudden, uh, he had gotten ear tubes placed. Um, and after that, then we got a, a referral for um, Help Me Grow because he wasn't, he stopped talking. Um, and, um, so then it just kind of rolled from there and, but it was literally like a switch was flipped and he went to being kind of in his own world and he would play with these, you remember those old peg puzzles? Mm -hmm. Um, he would play with those and just stare at them and over and over, just this repetitive, um, and in his own world and then it just kind of rolled Mm -hmm. from there Um, he stopped eating was the the major um, thing for me he went from eating um, typically Mm -hmm. um, to just wanted the the bland crunchy you know Cheez-Its or goldfish crackers and um, and and so that became our focus Mm -hmm. because obviously you know child needs to eat and, and so through the years, um, that has always been our focus. And then, you know, school starts. Okay, well, we'll get him through. And, um, but we're still going to have to focus on the, the eating, right. um, which they can't focus on mm-hmm. in the public schools. <laughs> and um, I guess as he's gotten older, um, you know, it's become more apparent and as to just how much um, the nutrition is affecting his his growth. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I think from, and the reason why I ask is I think it was really amazing that Nathan was able to, to, to say to you and to be able to, to voice to you, um, I know I need more than this. You know, I thought that was very powerful. Um, and the fact that he was able to say, I, I need, I'm going to need some help with, uh, to get, not just get through, right, to be successful in these goals. I think that's amazing. Yeah, I think that statement is so important. And um, if it's okay, I'm going to share something that we, I think, will be uh, proud of, in a sense, when we think about Nathan and his accomplishments. Um, He was able to articulate in a session about two weeks ago um, where he was struggling to come in, and he did finally come in, meaning into the building. And um, at some point, he laid down on a mat in the OT room and rested 
for a bit while we were in an adjacent room, but with eyes on to support and supervise, of course. And um, at the end of the day, everyone went home, and he was still with me. We were waiting for a late pickup that day that was on purpose. We needed more time with him, so we took it. And um, I said to him at one point, you know, it was, he said it was a rough day, a very, very rough day. And he said, I didn't even go upstairs. And I said, well, you couldn't go upstairs. You needed to be on that mat. And he said, thank you. (laughs) Instead of someone saying that it was my choice, thank you. Yeah. And he literally threw his hands up. He said, that is so much better to hear than it's your choice. Well, you decided your choice. And he's sort of like mimicking or imitating people he's heard say that. I thought, this is a big part of a seventh grader's experience is they've almost shaped to hear these things because, again, loving, very skilled teachers and other professionals and districts or even family, adult family members, don't know what else to do or say or Mm -hmm. call it. And so they accidentally call it something like a choice. Mm -hmm when it's a physiological struggle mm-hmm. or physiological root. A barrier even, yeah. So he was able to articulate that, and I just think we need to be proud of him seeing the difference, recognizing the difference, and calling it out and bringing it to a place of gratitude where he felt like this is good, mm-hmm. that I heard it's a need. Because guess what? It is. These kids do not wake up at 6.30 or 7 a.m. and say, I'm going to really make Dr. Lynette mad at two o'clock this afternoon and lay down on the mat. If they were that deliberate, they wouldn't have autism. Right. And the other thing I want to point out that I'm very proud of, and this is something else that we might want to share with the audience, is he just recently set his own goals. And this has been a probe um, for quite a while, but he needed time to kind of see what we were and what we weren't Mm -hmm. and have people's opinion within his family about what we were and what we weren't and what we could do for him to him to kind of maybe start to see that he could make it here. And so just recently, and um, it took about two months or so, maybe three, um, he finally said these goals, quote unquote, I want to be able to be motivated again like I used to be. And I want to be able to feel happy again. Mm. And what a statement. Right. What, what two statements that is, that he is missing the old version of him. And I see as a clinician, as an OT in particular, what some of those blockades are. We've talked about the nutrition as a little bit of hormonal. And habit, hello. Mm-hmm. Habits mm-hmm. are a very important part of our routine and our ability to function, as we learned about in the model of human occupation. Absolutely. And so... He's habitually forming thoughts about himself. He's habitually forming ways of thinking and schemas, as we know, from information processing theory that we've discussed in the past. And he's kind of stuck in this interpretation of who he is. And there are times I'm saying, you know what? I think that's the autism talking. I'm not going to listen to that right now. I'm going to wait for Nathan to talk. Mm -hmm. Um, And just to let him know that, okay, I'm, I'm clearly distinguishing the difference. And so he probably should too. That's the message in that. And yeah. it's not, I'm not nasty about it. I'm no. very supportive. I just kind of pointed out, like, I'm going to let that statement go because I don't think it's coming from a place of, of where you can get it to or where you can be. Mm-hmm. And it's not part of our healing process or our progress process. So we're going to let that be, and we're going to move on to things that are going to promote progress. And we do, and we have, and we've done quite a bit of progress emotionally, socially, and self-regulation-wise as well. And to tag on to that, I don't, Nathan's not used to that. Nathan's not used to making progress. He's used Mm -hmm. to going to these, even um, going to programs, you know, or talking to nutritionists or dietitians or going to feeding clinics and, and not making progress. And, and so that was, that was huge for him. I think that was kind of a, a a turning point for Mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. I see it too. Um, Because prior to that, it was, um, how are they going to be any different, Mom? How are they, what are they going to do that's any different than, you know, where I've been before? And um, so I, I'm truly, in thinking about that, that moment, feel that that was a turning point for him to realize that not only is he heard, you know, but he is it's acknowledged that it's not his choice. And, um, and he has said that. He would get really frustrated when professionals would tell him, you're choosing this, you know. 
I wouldn't, I would never choose this. You know, I, I wish I was just like my, my friends. Right. I wish, you right. know, mm-hmm. that I would never choose this. Right. And what child would, right? Right, yeah. right. Um, what human would. And so, so I really think that that's, that's a huge thing for him is, is, is being heard. Well, and I appreciate too, the, um, the level of relationship that he's been able to help build, especially cause I know that, you know, he and Finn talk quite a bit and it's kind of cool to listen to him when they're ending the conversation. Cause if they would both play games forever if we let them, yes, right? They would. Yeah. <laughs> but it's kind of funny cause now they've actually gotten to, or if we call Finn for dinner and this would never happen before, mm. we would say, my parents would prefer if I came to eat with them today nice. and you know, and that would never happen before. So they, they, He's getting those social cues because of those interactions with Nathan. Mm. Um, and I think that's the other beautiful part of Integrations Treatment Center is that they can see their individual success based on the program here, but then what a community they build together to help mm-hmm. them through. Mm. Um, you know, and I know there are days we've, we've struggled to get Finn out of bed to get to school, but he's like, you know what, I'm going to go see Nathan. I'm going to go mm. see Jason. I'm going to go see, yeah. you know, and then that pulls him out of bed. That's so nice. thank you for that. <laughs> beautiful. So what was missing from your life before your child was accepted into the Integrations Treatment Center? Hope mm-hmm. for his future, um, for his ability to get through the next six years of, of school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, without ITC, I don't, I don't know where we would be right now if he would, we're still going, um, you know, kind of through the motions. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's been a, a challenging journey mm-hmm. um, so far. Mm-hmm. Um, life happens <laughs> sometimes. Um, you know, but I, I feel like, you know, again, talking about not just stopping or giving up and uh, ITC's ability to keep moving forward you know, even if that means taking um, a step back and and taking those baby steps again, mm-hmm. you know, to get him where he needs to be, um, I I feel hope now that he's going to be able to one day, you know, return to his home school and um, and be successful and reach those goals that he has to graduate, to go to college, and you know, all of those things that everybody else hopes and dreams for. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'll, I'll add one more question just to say, if you could give a piece of advice to somebody about the success approach and what it's meant to you, and take a second, um, you know, I know you mentioned hope of what was missing from before, but what has the success approach brought to you and to Nathan? It has given me... Um, something concrete, um, something to learn from myself as a, as a parent, um, so that I can help him, Mm. you know, and, um, I don't feel, I don't feel talked at, you know, I, I feel talked to and, um, so it has really um, just kind of given me something, I think, to, to hang on to. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we get stuck, you know, and we um, just kind of go through the motions. And, um, and it's given me cause to kind of to stop and take a, a, you know, a step back maybe and, and look at who Nathan is mm-hmm. and what he needs and not just what I need for him you know but what he needs Mm -hmm. and I think we just have a tendency you know to get caught up in our in our lives and you know doing the same thing you know because this is what's working now and um, so it's it's given me the ability to kind of pause and learn Well, Darla, thank you so much today for taking time to talk with us and to talk with our listeners about um, your successful Nathan. Uh, It's been a a great journey to travel with you uh, this episode, and uh, please know that uh, you're always welcome back to the show. If ever there's an update you want to give about Nathan, 
or your journey with the success approach, um, we'd love to have you back. We would. And given that he's only been here about three months, we expect you to have updates because he is at the tip of the iceberg in terms of starting progress, but yet huge steps forward in a very short time, largely because of your communicative and collaborative nature, not just because your social worker knows how to, but because you're a great person and an amazing mom who puts their kid above everything else, which is means you're really a success mom. So we appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me. So my challenge for all the parents out there are to persevere in your parent heart in knowing the strengths of your child and securing the tools necessary to propel them forward. As we wrap up this episode, uh, learning about Successful Nathan and talking with Darla, um, my takeaway from um, this episode is that the success approach provides an opportunity for parents to really step back and take that breath take that collective breath and to ask yourselves, you know, double back and ask yourselves why something may be happening and to have the tools to assess that why so that we can help our child feel like they're taking steps forward and not just getting by. I really felt that was really powerful from this episode. Um, But there were so many powerful takeaways today. What about you, Lynette? Well, one that strikes me is to never, uh, never disconnect yourself from what you know about your child. I think that if mothers and fathers and grandparents, too, as an extension of that, really know their child and support their child, they end up securing the right helps over time. And to not beat yourself up, it might be five years, 10 years, 12 years, till you find that right resource, but they're out there. So celebrate when you find them. Recognize that, yep, probably could have been done earlier, but it is what it is. And picking up the pieces and going forward stronger, better now with the right supports is what it's all about. We would love for you to connect with us. Leave us feedback, a story, or a question that you're thinking about through our SpeakPipe page. Uh, You can leave us an audio recording and ask away. Who knows, you might even be featured on the episode. So you can reach us at www.speakpipe.com forward slash connect with success and use your phone or computer to leave us a voice recording. We'll put the link in the show notes, but again, that's www.speakpipe.com forward slash connect with success. We hope that you learned something today to help you on your journey with autism. We'll share more on our next Connect with Success podcast. Until then, expect success. The Success Approach is a registered service mark protected under intellectual property law. Unless otherwise specified, all music, audiovisual, and proprietary content shared in this podcast is property of Autism Productions, LLC, and its sister agency, Integrations Treatment Center. The use of this content is unlawful without the expressed written consent of aforementioned agency. For more information about The Success Approach, please go to our website at www.thesuccessapproach.org.